It also comes with a 25 foot tall antenna. If this doesn't give us cell service, I don't know what will. So be sure to check out the end of this video where we give you our final thoughts on iPhone versus Wi-Fi hotspot versus the big destination RV cell booster. Ah, oh, this is the frustrating part of boondocking. It says I have cell signal, but I really don't have anything. Oftentimes our favorite campsites are the most remote, which means they don't have any cell signal. Oh. At our campsite here, it says I have two bars of cell signal, but all I can do is send a text occasionally. So for our internet options, we have our cell phones, which we can hotspot to. We also have a Wi-Fi hotspot, which has a MIMO antenna. Now, this for some reason gets a little bit better service than our cell phones, but they're both not perfect. The other thing is, this runs out after 15 gigs, which Klet and I can chew through that pretty quickly. So we've heard a lot about Weboost as an option for internet service, and now it's time to see if it really works. We just got the Destination RV cell signal booster. It's supposed to be the best one on the market. As you can see, it doesn't look like a simple plug and play option. There's all these boxes and one more thing. It also comes with a 25 foot tall antenna. If this doesn't give us cell service, I don't know what will. Let's get started. So after taking everything out of the box and looking at some YouTube videos, what other people have done for some Wi-Fi tower installations, I think I might have found a decent solution. I think if I put the tower at the front of our Airstream and run the cords through the hole where all my battery cables come from, that might be a way to avoid cutting into the silver tin can. So fortunately today, Colette is out doing laundry and has already stripped the bed. So I'm going to pull the bed apart, get underneath it, and hopefully be able to run the coax cable underneath the bed. So uh, wish me luck. So one of the most important things about video editing is the music. That sets the tone. You can have a song like this. Or you can have a song like this. And they're gonna mean entirely different things. And one of the best ways to find some high quality music is through Filter. Filter is a new platform that has amazing music selections. They've got pre-selected playlists depending on what you're looking for. Sports, travel, epic drone shots, they've already got that stuff curated so you can spend less time searching for the song and more time editing your epic video. Not only does Filter have a paid subscription service, but they also have a free subscription service. So if you're a beginning creator, you can check out Filter and use it absolutely free while you're still growing your audience. And the last thing is, as a creator, you understand the value of your content. And on Filter, not only do the artists retain the rights to their songs, but they're also getting paid. So you can feel good that you are supporting the artists. So we want you to check out Filter by clicking the link below and check out all the amazing music that they have to offer today. Now, let's get back to the vlog. <laughs> So I have found the hole and because of our lithium batteries, having the larger cables, there's not a lot of space. This is going to be a snug fit. Works. And then explain it. <laughs> how, how does it work? <laughs> it's magic. <laughs> 
So while Scott's installing the Wii Boost, I'm gonna explain how it works. Teach me how it works. Scott's again. installing this. <laughs> I'm trying to remember why you told me. So the Wii Boost has a 25 foot telescoping pole which pulls cell signal from the nearest cell tower. Now it takes that signal and drives it into our Airstream where we have a device inside. That device then, if we are using our cell phones and making a call or sending a text message, it will send the signal back out to the telescoping pole and then the telescoping pole will emit it to the cell tower. Yes, I nailed it! <laughs> This took like five times. <laughs> so the the Wii Boost claims to boost your signal 65 decibels, which because it's a logarithmic scale, that is roughly 3 million times more powerful because for every three decibels that you increase, it doubles the strength of your signal. Nerd alert! But really, the main thing is, is does it work? Do we actually get to use our phones and laptops? That's the main question. So the two entrance points are all cocked up right now. So I kind of got to cut it away. I've got this one here, and this one where all the battery cables go in, which is what I was thinking initially. I used little metal wire to kind of poke a hole through just to make sure I was in the right spot. Then I used a small drill bit. Didn't actually drill, just kind of shoved it up in there and uh, cleared out some more of the caulk. And because metal tip is a lot bigger than just the wire and I just need the wire to go through, I pulled it off and hopefully this will go in now. That's a big success. Now, the only thing is, I have to figure out how to put the tip that I took off of that in back on, but that's probably a quick little YouTube search. Whew. All right, so, got some success. I've got the cord pulled up through the little hole, run around everything back there, and now it's out to basically the utility cord chute, and I need to just run it that way. So now I can put this all back together. I still have that problem with, I'm gonna have to figure out how to put this back on, but I have faith that it shouldn't be too hard. One other note, I highly recommend buying this cheap insulation and installing it right here because when it's cold outside, you've got, you're directly on the metal, at least Colette was sleeping right next to it. And this made a big improvement because basically she just had like a cold draft and this, along with actually putting some insulation in the windows as well, helped out a lot. Not the cleanest look, but when the bed's there, you really don't see it. All right, so made some progress. Also made a big mess in the airstream. <laughs> So I got the wire run through here for the cable coming in from outside. I've got the router set up right here and then I got power run to it from underneath. There was a plug underneath there. So I run the power out and this is all powered up. Now, what I want to do is get the inside antenna, this little guy, set up right above the TV. So I've got to run a cable from that spot all the way over there. That's the trick. And I think the easiest way to do it is by going underneath our closet because then you can get all the wires that run underneath and basically have to feed the cable from there and connect them. You gonna help me? home living <laughs> so we have emptied the closet and now I'm hoping that it's not too hard for us to run this cable down through here underneath the sink 
Actually, I don't know. I don't even know if it's gonna be possible. But... <laughs> really? Should we measure it out? Almost finished. You know, some days I impress myself. Oh, damn it. <laughs> <laughs> what was that about impressing yourself? <laughs> some days I impress myself, and this was one of those days. I was able to get the cable run, and here was the trick. I didn't run it from here and then go all the way that way. I pulled the oven up. Let me show you. I pulled the stove up and then ran the cable down and back that way. And the other cable down and back that way. It's success. But I still have one more thing to fix. The cable ending that I took off at the very beginning. So I still have to do that. And then everything should be up and running. Okay, I got everything installed. We got the antenna, got the wires run. Everything looks nice and neat. And I figured out how to fix the end of the cable. I recommend buying a few twist on caps because that's what I'm gonna have to use to fix this. It's in there temporarily, but it's gonna help you if you're gonna run wires, you can rip those caps off. The wires are a lot smaller through your holes and then you can just put on, replace that cap at the end of your coax cable. Okay, so now the big question that we need to answer is, does this even work? And so I'm gonna check it a few ways. So the first way is just going to fast.com. Good website, check it out. And you can see already that this has got some blazing fast speed. So we're gonna test, I'm up to 4.2 megabits per second. That is basically enough to stream YouTube videos, anything you'd really want. Let's see what the upload speed is. Wow, that's fast. This has 4.2 megabits per second download and five megabits per second upload. That's amazing. We went from zero speed at all. I'll show you. I went to fast.com. I'll turn this off and doing the test. I can't even get fast.com to actually load the website. That's how slow we're in right now. And this antenna makes a huge difference. We can work like normal. This speed is fast enough to do most things that you're going to, want to do on a daily basis, surfing the web, watching videos on YouTube, uploading, downloading. This is amazing. This is a total game changer. I'm impressed. I'm actually very impressed with how well this works. And so this is nice. This is going to make our lives a lot better because when you live inside this tin can, bad thing is, is that really no signal gets in. And because this signal is being repeated from the outside, it's like we're standing next to a tower almost. So I want to do one more check. And that is just to check the change in the signal. So what I'm going to do is basically put my phone into field test mode. And so you can type in this number right there, hit send, and it will automatically take you to this screen that looks foreign. You're going to hit the option RACH attempt. And on there, you're going to look for a value of RSRP. And that is the actual value. So right now, without the tower, I'm at negative 110, which is basically means you don't really have any signal. I mean, that's just enough to text and call and that's about it. So let me turn it back on. Wow. So this took it from 110 to 87. Now, a thing to know about the cell signal scale is for every three decibels of increase, it doubles your signal strength. So I'm gonna have to do the math here to show you the actual times it increases, but really that doesn't matter. What matters is the fact that we can use our internet. We can call people, we can text, and that's really what you wanna do. And so now we can hotspot to our laptops and get all the work done that we need to get done. I'm impressed. Is Got my working? phone. My phone is working. I have full cell signal. Whoa. Whoa. Now someone could just work on my battery. <laughs> the Wii Boost does not charge your battery. <laughs> so it's been roughly two weeks since we got our destination RV cell booster. And the first spot was probably the best case scenario. We went from absolutely no service, not being able to do really anything, to being able to stream and upload anything we needed to do. Now, the second spot, we went from same similar situation, basically very little service on our cell phones, to 
pretty good functional service. It wasn't the absolute best, but we were able to get by. A little bit of buffering here and there when watching videos. And now this third spot. We were in a campground of roughly 20 minutes outside of Zion, and there is absolutely zero cell phone service in this area. And so I extended the cell tower all the way as high as it would go, and try to get the best service and we were just able to get barely any service at all. So really is it functional? Not in this part. We're pretty dependent on the Wi-Fi that the campground is offering. So when it comes down to iPhone versus Wi-Fi hotspot with antenna versus this big tower, well, they all have their perks. I mean, this is pretty simple. If you're just out and about, you know, occasionally camping, then I think the cell phone is probably best for most people. If you're looking for a bit of an upgrade for not very much, then the Wi-Fi hotspot is your next step. Like I said before, this would get a little bit better service. Not really sure why. I mean, you do have this antenna, but also when we would have good service on our phones, this would allow us a little bit faster download speeds and upload speeds than our cell phones. And then if you really want to be able to get off the grid or just have more consistent internet, then this tower is the way to go. Now, it's not very cheap. This will cost you roughly $700 when you get it, and that doesn't include the install. So overall, I think it is an excellent product. If you're going to be off the grid, I definitely recommend it. If you're the occasional RVer, if you need to have the Wi-Fi, then go for it. Thanks so much, guys.